After the Second World War, there was a kind of second wave of globalization in economics. And about at the same time, there was the first kind of normative globalization towards the installation of human rights all over the globe. That was after the probably so far darkest age of human mankind, caused by German National Socialism, by fascism in Europe. There was a hope, especially after 48, to come to a kind of normative convergence to install humanism, human principles, humanist principles in not only the uh, Western societies, but all over the world. So the uh, type of convergence Johnny Tonyola was talking about was a kind of aim in those days. Now, we are facing a wholly different situation. Formally, we have this type of convergence, at least in paper. But we have another situation in so far as we have multiculturalism in a whole variety of different ways. The course will, first of all, study the uh, differences of multiculturalism, um, which are to be seen in most Western uh, and uh, some Asian societies. For instance, we have a kind of subcultural multiculturalism, visible from developments over the last three decades. We have homosexual families in Germany, in Israel, in the United States, and in many other, pla many other places. We have a kind of equal rights situations for homosexual and other families. But these units, or subunits of society, define themselves against the majority. And then we have religious subunits caused by immigration. We have strong immigration in the United States. We have strong immigration in the United States. We now have a lot of immigration in France, in Germany, in Britain. And the problem is, are the new minorities, basically religious minorities, treated with equal respect as the majorities? Is it possible to adopt the universal claims of human rights to minorities the same way as the majorities enjoy them? So there, there we have a clash of universalism and regionalism. And this clash has not been res resolved so far. And my hope is that our seminar will do its best to solve some of the problems. Um, and I, as I explained uh, on, on Tuesday, the students and myself are sitting in the same boat. This is, of course, due to the situation in Venice anyway, but. Uh, I hope we come uh, together to some kind of uh, point where we find solution. Um, so we have this rather, rather tricky and interesting problem of universalism versus regionalism. And then, of course, we have claims from human rights which are still existing and which, which can't be relativized. If you, for instance, believe in equal rights for males and females, you will not be prepared to step back and allow or agree with the kind of relativization of these rights in other countries. So there is a problem of how are we legitimated to intrude or in introduce our own visions of human rights into cultures where they don't exist so far. Um, I explained this problem on the basis of the example of female circumcision, which is a practice in Muslim and Christian societies in Northern Africa. Are we allowed to interfere in other cultures? just on the basis of believing that we are right. The headline for that is, uh, uh, I forgot 
<laughs> sorry, paternalism. Um, sorry, paternalism. Oh. So, the problem of paternalism. So are we allowed to interfere paternalistically into other cultures? Of course, we, we've seen a number of paternalistic interventions in, over the last uh, 15 years. The, uh, NATO interfered in Kosovo, and, and some Western nations interfered in Iraq. Um, humanitarian interventions seem to be, at least on universal grounds, absolutely okay. But now we see it's not okay. So what shall we do with these claims? Shall we sort of uh, argue for intervention? Or what shall we do with claims where regions which are, or which have a long tradition of being different from other regions under the same uh, national administration, the Welsh, the Scots, etc., Jurai in Switzerland and in France, uh, uh, should they be allowed to separate from the nations they still belong to, although there is no reason to separate in terms of violations of rights? Some of my colleagues in ethics argue, yes, if there is a majority within this minority, they should be allowed to separate. But where will that end? There is a, a new movement in uh, northern Bavaria, which is called uh, the International of Franconians. Uh, uh, you might not remember or know that Franconians live from the Czech border uh, to about Paris. And this new movement, they, they claim that all these Franconians should be reunited under one flag. And some of my, my colleagues argue, uh, why shouldn't they do this if, if there is a majority for it? I think that this is crazy. But Anyhow, we'll talk about it <laughs> uh, in a liberal and open way. Um, the uh, second course is uh, wholly different from this first one. It's dealing with the two big heroes of uh, philosophical justice, Aristotle and Rawls. Um, Aristotle wrote three major books on ethics, and uh, he developed probably the most refined ideas about justice in, 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 ancient, in the ancient days, Greek days. Uh, and it's interesting to see that some of the insights he had are still valid today, others are not. And it's especially interesting to see how roles differs from Aristotle, and where they are on common ground, and then it will be interesting to see interesting to see uh, what happened to the Rawlsian ideas of justice after thirty years discussion. There's a recent book written by Amartya Sen, who is quite critical about Rawls, um, and we will, of course, we will first study Rawls and then we try to be critical about him as well. These are the two courses, and I hope you will all enjoy it. Uh, and I, I suspect that we really do enjoy it because uh, you can't do anything here without enjoying it.